coming to our 34th Lava Sunday Salon. Hello. Uh, Tom is going to talk as our first presenter. Tom Sitton. Tom, you are Curator Emeritus of the Natural History Museum. I will say something about Tom that, that he will blush and tell you not to worry about, uh, which I think is really great, is Tom filled out the application for Broadway to get on the National Register as a district back in 1979. 74, 74, 19, okay, in 1976, Tom filled out the application to get this block, and you did Spring Street also. Yeah. Yeah, so Spring Street and Broadway were both, he wrote the applications. Maybe, maybe before you start your talk, you'll just talk for one minute about that process? Because it was kind of neat, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting story. We're on Broadway. We all, all right, Tom, you're going to talk about your book, but maybe you'll just indulge us for a minute and talk about uh, records, historic records in, in Los Angeles. Okay. So this is Tom. He's going to talk about his book. Your book is here. You have a couple copies somewhere. Back in the corner. Back in the corner. Okay, so, so at the end of his talk, if you want to buy his book, you've got four or five copies here, and obviously you can order it on, on that, down the uh, through the Southern California Historical Society's website. Okay, so Tom, take it away. Thank you. Um, very briefly on uh, the historic site, when I was uh, originally hired at the uh, LA County Museum of Natural History back in, can you hear me okay? Oh, I didn't know what the. Uh, what, 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 can, we, can we try it with the microphone? Can you turn these lights off? I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. It's like we're in the spotlight. Oh, sure. Okay. Hey. Does, that, does that come out okay? Those, they turned off everything but those. That's good. All right. Too much, uh, too much, I still won't be able to read this. That's why I make it bigger these days. I found out the hard way from uh, the side of it. Is that okay? Yeah. You're allowed to mic. Okay. And I probably don't need a microphone. I'm going to be extremely loud. So. Uh, anyway, uh, when I first started at the Museum of Natural History back in 1974, it was to work on uh, a survey of historic sites in uh, Los Angeles County. And, um, so I set up a small uh, operation, which was basically just me, and I got a couple of bucks from the uh, State Office of Historic Preservation to be able to uh, hire some students from across the street at USC and one from UCLA to be able to help me work. And um, we promised them that we would survey 500 historic sites throughout the county of Los Angeles, and we also had to do 18 National Register nominations as part of the grant in order to be able to get money. Uh, so at that time, it was a question of trying to figure out, okay, where, which sites should we do? Um, and under that at that time, Los Angeles downtown was undergoing a, a huge uh, redevelopment project. Um, and we decided that besides surveying a lot of the buildings along Spring Street, Broadway, and so on, that uh, we, we had to do three historic districts, so we thought Broadway would be one of them as a theater district. Uh, we also did Spring Street block over. And as super, LA supervisors, I've seen letters where supervisors suggested that was not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> uh, the work that I'm doing right now at the Huntington Library, which you'll hear a little bit about, which is the second half of this, it's the sequel to, to this book. I'm going through the uh, Ed Edelman's paper, who was a supervisor at, at the time, but since interviewed him, really nice guy, that was a medical issue in his days. Um, but I've gone through the files uh, from his aides that are People, uh, 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 owner, the property owners up and down the street were screaming, we don't want our buildings on any kind of a survey because we don't want anybody to be able to tell us what we can do with them. Uh, and I believe that's partially because a couple of them were thinking about tearing the buildings down and we thought that they were So um, I, when it, I put the, uh, app, the, the National Register application together both for Waterloo Spring Street and a small um, area out in South Pasadena. Um, which was, I really shouldn't say this, I was actually helped by somebody at Caltrans uh, to kind of put it along. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was departed, so I, I you know, she's going to get in trouble. Enough. Was that Markham Place? Pardon? Was that the Markham Place? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so we, so we did that one too. That, that, this was all at the same time, yeah. because we thought these were the ones that needed to be scrutinized to see if they actually meet the, uh, the criteria, and all three of them were put on with uh, some opposition from uh, Supervisor Edelman on Broadway and, Super and the Councilman uh, Lindsay on yeah. uh, Spring Street, but we got and some of Caltrans for uh, for South Pasadena, but we got through that. So, and then after that, I moved on to other things at the museum. So I wasn't doing anything. Perfect, you there did it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the uh, that's the ancient history part of it. So anyway, 
And I hope you don't mind if I read this because if I do this off the cuff, you'll hear all day. It's, you know, there's, uh, this is about a whole book. Well, you have a pile over there. It's a pretty thick take, take book. A minute, take, take a second. Hold your book up. People want to see the book. <laughs> and I was actually supposed to pick up a bunch of these, but uh, that didn't work out today. So, yeah, this is what it looks like. But it's, it's kind of thick, so there's a lot of information in here. And what I tried to do today is just sort of skim through it and pull a few things out. So it'll probably go pretty fast, but there is a lot of discussion of either every paragraph or perhaps even every sentence that's in, in the book. So if, there probably might be a lot of time for questions after I finally get through this. No, me too. But uh, OK, anyway, that's what it looks like. In fact, there's even a slide before I get to OK, how many of you, uh, first of all, live in Los Angeles County? County? County, yeah, not, not city. Well, it could be city, yeah, okay. That's quite a few. Um, and how many of you can name all seven county supervisors? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it was a trick question. Okay. Yeah, only, I, I, the last time I did this, I, when I said it, no one, everyone just looked. <laughs> I pulled off so I can tell you. So, okay. um, the county sheriff? We all know uh, just yeah. recently. That's a trick question. Yeah, it sort of is. Yeah, yeah because it's not popular anymore. Uh, and the district attorney, um, the CEO of Los Angeles County. CEO. We have a CEO. It used to be the CAO. That was changed back in uh, 2000. So uh, William uh, uh, Fukuoka. Fujioka. Okay. Uh, that's because no one ever pays attention to it. Kind of a bureaucrat, but he probably has an awful lot more power than what a lot of other politicians do. And that's going to be a focus in the next book about the CAO and perhaps CAO uh, has become sort of a semi politician on their own with the amount of power that they have, especially with the budget and uh, regulations and that sort of thing. Okay, um, as a Los Angeles County employee for almost 33 years, um, oh, Richard, yes, I think it is. Yeah, I have nothing to do. You push the button for me. I'm happy to yeah. push the button. Okay. Oh, okay. No, right now, just get yeah. it. Oh, okay. I have to push yeah. the button. Well, the button. Right there. Just okay. Have a seat, Richard. It'll be a yeah. mouthful. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. 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 Okay. I'll do that. Okay. I'll let you know when to go. Perfect. 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 Okay. okay. As a Los Angeles County employee for almost 33 years, I realized in the early part of my career that there was a lot that I didn't know about what, the, what Los Angeles County government did. Uh, and for that matter, what any county did. Uh, other than sending a property tax, uh, which included a charge for the Mosquito Abatement District, and made you stand in line forever to get a, and, uh, to get a copy of an important document. Counties seem to be important for rural areas, maybe, but not for cities and suburbs, where I grew up, which really wasn't that difficult. But as I spent uh, more time in the Seaver Center for Western History Research at the County Museum of Natural History, examining county records, I realized that there was a lot more to county government than I thought. And uh, these are records uh, that a lot of people don't get to see, um, including the Great Register of Voters, uh, uh, registered cattle brands, jail registers, uh, food assessment leg uh, ledgers, and then this uh, Register of Voters, which uh, lists personal information, information such as where voters were born, where they lived, their occupation, and physical performances such as scars and missing fingers. So not to, it's on purpose, so you can't vote too often. Uh -huh. You can vote early, but not too often. So uh, that's how that's how they could keep track of it when you showed up to, to vote. Uh, and for years, I've been doing research on Los Angeles. Uh, and like most historians, I focused on the city, not much on the larger region uh, to any great extent. I realized there was a, a whole dimension of local government that we were missing, or maybe a misunderstanding, since county governments seem to have a significant impact in the lives of county residents both those who live in cities, and especially those who live in unincorporated areas like Altadena, Willowbrook, and Hacienda Heights. In those communities, the County Board of Supervisors generally represents local government similar to the city council. So about 10 years ago, I thought it'd be a good idea to investigate the origins and development of Los Angeles County and its government to determine how it started and how it became such a humongous agency over the span of 150 years. I didn't plan to write an encyclopedia on Los Angeles County, but in the process, I learned a lot about it and about American counties in general. And I hope that this book, uh, which takes the story up to 1950, uh, will help to explain the early role of one of these counties uh, in the history of their development. 
when Los Angeles County was formed in 1850, oh, you probably can't see much from here. This is Los Angeles County right here, if you can see where that little border is showing. Uh, 1850. This is San Diego County in 1850. These are the original 27 counties that were, uh, were formed in. Um, it was uh, formed as one of 27 subunits of state government, which is basically California at the local level. Um, as you can see, it's sort of relatively small. Uh, the next maps are not too much. Okay. But these maps um, shows how it expanded tremendously in the following year. Okay, here's Los Angeles County here. Here's Los Angeles County in 1851. So it took a wow. to San Diego and a lot of others. It was over 35,000 square miles at that time, although most of it, as you can see, is pretty much desert or, or semi-desert. And with a very small population. Uh, this is what it looked like before it shrank over the next four years as portions of it became new counties. Kern would be up here to the north, part of the Mexico City, Tulare. Orange County, which would be down here, and San Bernardino County, which also then includes a little bit of the Riverside uh, County at the time, too, so it's pretty well carved up. The county seat was in the city of Los Angeles. Big city. It was, was Los Angeles always the seat of the county? Yes, since 1850. It was the only city in 1850, so it pretty much had to be the county seat. The county seat, uh, the city of uh, LA, was a virtually a lawless frontier town. You can see there really wasn't much of a town to it. It had a population of over, over a thousand people. <laughs> the county had only a minuscule workforce made up of the original officers. Tom, before we got this slide, what's this this stuff? I think it's an outhouse. No, not <laughs> uh, Adobe Homes. Uh, okay. Adobe Homes. Uh, here's the church, the plastic church right okay. here. So you, can Fort Moore. Moore. so you can see, there's really not much to it in the 18th century. So, so maybe that's Fort Moore? Fort Moore. Uh, probably, yeah. 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 It seems like that. That's about the right spot. Yes. Okay. The county had only a minuscule workforce made up of the original officers. This is probably way too, too little to see from back there, isn't it? Should we turn off more lights here? Can that help? I don't know. Is, can anybody see? Uh, can anyone see from back there? Probably not. Okay. All right. Well, you don't need to read these because I'm going to tell you already. That's right. Let it be. Oh, that helps. Hey. That's why he's in charge. That's why he's in charge. Whoa. That's pretty good. Uh, yes? Yeah, that's it. Close enough. You don't have to read all the uh, The county had only a minuscule workforce uh, made up of the original officers, which were, I'll read them without their names, a county judge, a county attorney, which only, only lasted for two years, uh, a county clerk, a county sheriff, who was also the tax collector, a county treasurer, a county assessor, a county recorder, county surveyor and a county coroner. The district attorney uh, was shared by two counties, uh, Los Angeles and uh, San Diego, which made up District 1. And a court of sessions composed of the county judge and two associates was the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branches of county government all rolled into one uh, before the Board of Supervisors was created in 1952. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm working on the next book right now. So. Uh, all all full-time positions? Uh, oh no. <laughs> no, at uh, this time the, uh, well let's see, well court sessions, they were in court whenever they had cases. When the uh, Board of Supervisors came in, they, were, they would work the first three or four days of the month, uh, and that would be about it, except for summer, during the summer they would be the assessment uh, uh, judiciary, if you want to call it. They would listen to assessment appeals of, of anybody complaining that their, their assessments were too high. So then they'd have to really spend a little time. And that was pretty much it. So. You know, I was, I'd be scanning newspapers and I'd be finding reports of county business for maybe the first three or four days of the month and then there'd be nothing to get into the next month. So, as I said, there really wasn't much to do. So, uh, the county treasurer, let's see, when, okay, um, court of sessions, okay, a county jailer, uh, who was actually one of the first employees who was hired for the public duty, and a few others rounded out the county bureaucracy with the assistance of road overseers and other volunteers 
and township uh, justices and constables, and there were, I think, six townships that were formed in 1851. So that wasn't a very good group of people either. It was a pretty small group, but there wasn't much to do early on because of the small population. In the following century, all that changed. The county was still responsible for its initial directives of building roads, providing for inventories and such, but had added a multitude of other duties, regional planning, environmental protection, and providing municipal services for unincorporated uh, communities, to name just a few. As described by a local observer in 1956, quote, although the county is a creature of the state, serving primarily to administer the state's affairs on a local level, it is at the same time the governmental unit with which most citizens have the most intimate contact, the immediate extension of their own homes. Even more than city government, county government affects the everyday lives of its citizens. It sets their assessment rates and collects their taxes. It enrolls them as voters, supervises uh, their going to the polls, certifies them as born or buried, permits them to get married, tries them in its courts, incarcerates them in its jails, <laughs> treats them in its hospitals. Like its prototype, the ancient English shire, the American county uh, carries out its traditional functions of peace, justice, and defense. But in the second half of the 20th century, in great urban regions such as Los Angeles area, uh, the county is being forced to assume functions for which it was never originally designed. It explains why we probably don't know what a lot of these functions are. This passage uh, left out quite a few uh, county responsibilities for jobs it assumed. A county sheriff, uh, department to protect you if you lived in an unincorporated un area or in a city that contracted for such services. A county coroner who might slice you up if you were an autopsy. The establishment of history, science, and art museums. A public library system, parks and recreation facilities and beaches, preserving historical sites. Not very well, necessarily. <laughs> uh, and supporting, well, they hired me, so. uh, Supporting music uh, and other arts. Um, also, monitoring bond elections and selling them for school districts, planning for future development and creating ordinances to, to enforce them, running a massive welfare department to help those in dire economic need, creating a health department for keeping your body intact if you could not afford it, approving and sometimes taking responsibility for the formation of special districts for things like water supply, street lighting, and sewers, building infrastructure to control flood water, fight fires, and protect vital records for which you have to stand in line for hours to get. As you can tell, I have stood in line for uh, Monitoring uh, racial discrimination and creating programs to, to relieve it. And after, 19, after 1956, services like mental health clinics to keep your mind at ease, special services for children and senior, senior citizens, which some might have been built somewhere. Uh, planning transportation and rapid transit facilities, and uh, among many others. In the years before 1950, Los Angeles County became a national leader in the development of American counties by the early 1900s with its home rule charter that gave uh, more independence to uh, local officials. Uh, the 1913 charter went into effect three years after the 1910 bombing of the Los Angeles Times building by two union leaders, uh, two years after the Socialist Party of America leader, Joe Perriman, almost was elected mayor of Los Angeles, and in the same year that the Armory Show of Modernist Art uh, opened in New York City. So you might think the charter uh, could have been a bit radical at the time. Um, it wasn't radical, but it was modern uh, for its type and period. The first county charter to include home rule, which allowed the supervisors more power in local decisions rather than to have to ask for prior uh, approval from the state legislature, which they had to do uh, uh, before that to, to a large extent. The charter also included new positions in government, the first public defender in the United States, the first county public defender in the United States, I'm not positive about this. Uh, a road commissioner to manage the county system of roads and highways rather than having each supervisor do it in his own district, and a county council to act as a lawyer for the county long after the county attorney's uh, position was disbanded back in the 1850s. Uh, those are among some of the features that made it the most modern uh, in the nation at its time. A later innovation was the 1954 Lakewood plan. Yeah. For a brand new city Thank you. in Southeast County. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was created as a planned community around a shopping center. 
Lakewood, California was twice the size of Levittown in New York, the quintessential planning community up to that time. County officials and Lakewood City Fathers worked out a plan for the county to provide almost all municipal services uh, for it by contract, which made it very cost effective for Lakewood. This novelty resulted in the incorporations of 30 new cities in LA County over the next 10 years. And up to, up to that time, there have only been 50, 45. Today, Los Angeles County has the largest population of any county in the nation. In fact, it has more residents than 42 states. And it has the largest county government in the nation with a budget of over $25, million, $25 billion, which is probably more than most states, and over 100,000 employees. From a small workforce uh, and number uh, of departments in 1850, it grew much larger by 1950 and even much larger after that. And uh, this is an organization chart from 2010 that shows some of county government. Um, many commissions, committees, special districts, and other agencies are not even included here. And this is right from the county's website. So. Uh, I hope that the courthouse crowd, this book, will serve as a reference book on this subject up to about 1950, and I intend for it to serve as the historical context for my continuing study of Los Angeles County in the years since World War II. The major issues of the uh, 1850 to 1950 era, as I see them, are still prevalent today, and I hope to make uh, a lot of connections between them uh, in the next book. They include, among others, county leadership, hence the title, Courthouse Crowd. Um, who were they? A bunch of old myths. <laughs> for the most part, yeah. For the mo well, before 1850, they were all old men. Or who's, who's the guy with the beard? Yeah, beard. Oh, we'll get to him. I've got a, I've got a better <laughs> picture of him, and it's coming up in just a second. Um, who were they? I'll just explain that. In some cases, I tried to look at their place of nativity, nativity occupation, religious affiliation, political party, and such, to see if there were any patterns in the voting with the votes that I could actually find. Uh, what interests did they represent? Which interest groups did they favor when making decisions? Uh, this group would include some of the old California uh, cattle ranchers, large-scale farmers, real estate brokers, and professionals who served on the board of supervisors over the years. Another is the uh, growth of the county bureaucracy in addition to new uh, agencies mandated by the state and later the federal government, as well as agencies for non-mandated services such as museums and other amenities. Structural revisions to county administration, such as the consolidation of county and city services when appropriate, the creation of new counties, as I mentioned, San Bernardino, Turn, and Orange counties in the late 19th century, and the unsuccessful attempts to create more, particularly in the 1970s. Uh, the addition of the chief administrative officer in 1938, and you can't, nobody knows his name now, so. And many calls uh, since then, in, uh, since the 1930s, for an elected executive, rather than appointed by the Board of Supervisors, uh, and the expansion of the Board of Supervisors of five, as we know, uh, to seven, to nine, to 11, or even to 15 uh, over these years. All were suggested at various times. In fact, actually, a number, in a number of instances, they were actually voted on by you Los Angeles County voters, and you all voted against them for various reasons. So I don't have to explain why, probably one anything. I can't remember if I did or not. Uh, corruption. The present scandal involving the, the county assessor is uh, reminiscent of many such scandals in, in the past, particularly in the 1880s and during the Great Depression. Quite a few county officials were fired or demoted for various defenses, usually involving money. In fact, one county supervisor was convicted of accepting uh, an $80,000 bribe and spent a few years in prison, and then I'll get back to that in just a minute. Law enforcement. <laughs> it's not the one I was looking for. It, 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 rush. it, it, it makes the case. In, in fact, actually, I'll, I'll connect that to another slide. Uh, recent reports of county jail problems and brutality at times, as documented by the Colts Commission in the early 1990s, have their predecessor in the 1850 to 1950 era, with crooked district attorneys and sheriff's deputies who cooperated with big time gamblers. Sleepy Lagoon and the Zoot Suit Rights in the 1940s focused attention on racism as well as juvenile delinquency, which became a major problem with gang violence in the 1980s and after. Public welfare for the unemployed, those unable to work, children, and the disabled, 
Um, in the early days, the county was responsible for taking care of indigents and providing medical care for them, and for burying the indigent dead. In the 1880s, a number uh, of indigents who had arrived recently were given a railroad ticket back to where they came from, which all the counties were doing that at the time. And I think actually it's been done in places now. If I know. Uh, the problem was marked much larger in the 1930s when the repatriation of Mexican nationals and Mex Mexican Americans in the county was seen as a solution to growing the roof holes. Uh, these were a bunch of squatters in the San Diego Valley uh, during the Depression. That's how they were um, Environmental pollution. Oh. Probably what it still looks like now. Um, and protection issues. Trashing our air and our water, littering the landscape, creating flood control infrastructure, problems with lax or no regional planning, smog abatement, for which the supervisors were the primary agency up to about 1980 and land use planning and development, especially for favored developers. I hope to connect all of these issues and others uh, to what's been going on for the last 60 years or so and place it in the larger context of patterns and events in the state and in the nation, maybe in the world if I can figure out how to do that. Um, so I'll give you just a brief interview of the present book. The evolving role of uh, Los Angeles County government can be seen in the major areas of its development. From 1850 to, 19, to 1865, the cattle industry was the basis for the Southern California frontier economy, and the county supervisors, most of whom were ranchers, uh, who protected it. With few duties and little revenue, they ruled the uh, caretaker state, keeping taxes low, and providing, especially for uh, landowners, <laughs> you know, like cattle uh, people, uh, and providing limited infrastructure and no amenities. Like dancing sometimes. Uh, a few entrepreneurs would uh, spearhead the creation of roads and other infrastructure for future growth with a combination of public and private funding. There was always public funding for private ventures. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> probably now, too. Uh, many of the early supervisors in the 1850s and 1860s were Latinos, uh, such as Manuel Oritena, who uh, raised cattle and served in various offices in the Mexican and American periods of California history. He was among the first group of five elected supervisors. Manuel Dominguez was another rancher who served on the board in the 1860s, and he owned Rancho San Pedro, which took up quite a bit of south of Los Angeles County uh, early on. The county seat at the time was very cosmopolitan and included a number of Jewish merchants from Prussia, uh, as well as Irishmen and Frenchmen, who also served as supervisors. And sorry, they're all men, men, men. So. Uh, at this time, but we'll get, we'll get there. Well, maybe not this um, The decline of the cattle industry and expansion of farming after 1865. I had to throw some of these in just to keep things from getting boring here. Uh, along with the in migration of Anglos from the south and east, transformed the county. A national uh, growth machine of Anglo newcomers combined private initiative with public funding to uh, protect agriculture while promoting the development of the region. They campaigned, they campaigned for government-subsidized railroads, federal harbor improvements, and other infrastructure, all of which enhanced land values and commercial holdings of the local economic elites. The supervisors were primarily uh, farmers and businessmen who protected agriculture, approved the expenditures for subsidizing railroads, spread the tax burden widely, and limited other spending. By the 1880s, the supervisors, uh, now real estate agents, developers, and small businessmen, also promoted urbanization and industry and cooperated with the newly uh, formed Chamber of Commerce. As farming took over, we had supervisors such as Benjamin Davis Wilson, who had a large uh, citrus orchard and uh, vineyard in eastern Los Angeles and then in the Pasadena area. He's also the grandfather of uh, General George Patton. That's it. Uh, he was also a merchant who served in various government offices, including the first county clerk and later supervisor. He was the second mayor of Los Angeles and also served in the state senate. He's been here since the uh, early 1940s. <clears throat> As the county uh, became more urban and pop uh, with population increases in the 1870s and 1880s, the Board of Supervisors reflected this transformation. Okay. That's the guy with the beard in 1932. It's a little bit earlier. Okay. 
William Touche Martin came to Los Angeles in a covered wagon from Texas in 1853, became a farmer, a beekeeper, and a school teacher in the Claremont area, and was elected supervisor in 1886. After one term, he decided to get as far away from civilization as possible, <laughs> and became a permanent living up near Mount Baldwin. They did drag him back to downtown Los Angeles, though, in 1932, that picture with all the rest of the city. Thomas Edwin Rowan, uh, known as Smiling Tommy, was a native of New York uh, who ran a bakery, a bank, and the Democratic Party fairs in Los Angeles. Smiling Tommy was a supervisor from 1886 to 1890 during the boom of the 80s, and then was elected mayor of Los Angeles. He uh, uh, earlier served as, as a city policeman, as county treasurer, and as a fire, uh, volunteer uh, fireman. And Edwards, Edward, no, no, no. Edward Salisbury Field, sorry, I'm photographing that field that I've been able to find so far, uh, then came to, to, to Los Angeles in 1883 and opened a real estate office and did quite well. He served as supervisor from 1894 to 1903, and as you can see from these three, we're sort of moving on to, to uh, the supervisors are moving on to becoming a little bit more urban uh, oriented in their looks and in their, uh, and in their uh, occupations. The National Progressive Era, from about the turn of the century to the end of World War I, uh, local reform activists emerged to modernize county government and altered local politics as urban professionals devised the new county charter, charter that I spoke of already. That compact put the county in the forefront of the nation with home rule, fewer elective offices, and civil service uh, procedures uh, with the addition of a major program for major flood protection. Private enterprise was less influential in the county government, but still powerful in the political economy. Politics in the Progressive Era was evident in the competition on the Board of Supervisors between the changing conservative majority known by their opponents as the Solid Three and by reformers such as... Oh, wait, what's, where, where is that taken? Uh, Austin O'Connor. College. Yeah. Oh. I only threw it in because he's so known for progressive sure. business, so it's national progressive. Okay. By reformers uh, such as, almost, I mean, uh, or George Alexander, sorry. Uh, who fought the solid three over issues such as suppressing vice in the form of prostitution, illegal gambling, uh, and approval of liquor licenses, in favoritism in hiring county employees, and in deciding who would be awarded the contract for county buildings, um, and in other such uh, decisions by the, the supervisors. When the mayor of Los Angeles was chased out of office uh, by the reformers in 1909, Alexander was selected as their candidate for office, and he served for the next four years. In the 1920s, the regional growth machine driven by private enterprise uh, took over in a decade of uh, national prosperity. The supervisors promoted economy and government during an era of considerable population influx. They allowed business almost free reign while approving some innovations such as the nation's first regional planning commission and county zoning ordinances. This decade was the heyday of the influential Chamber of Commerce boosters. I don't know if any of them are here today. Anyway, uh, who comprised an always uh, powerful interest group. However, the business uh, elite was not completely dominant, as evidenced by its competing of, of economic objectives, specifically locality interests, and many public defeats at the hands of its opponents. During the Roaring Twenties, many of the supervisors were tight with the Chamber of Commerce directors as business and industry flourish. And uh, these are a bunch of the directors here. The uh, other gentleman just off to the right there is Mayor George Cryer. I couldn't find them with a good one them with the supervisors, so. Uh, the political might of the business establishment was strong, but was contested by a coalition of liberals, union labor, and others under the direction of lawyer Camp Kane Parrott. Oh, yeah. Wait, that's really hard to get a picture of him. Good for you. Uh, it's, it's an early one. It's oh, either that or one of these. Good for you. Back in the 40s when he's a little bit older. Good he's an interesting guy. I wrote an article about him uh, from, based on my dissertation. Uh, anyway, I'll give you that. That's another whole other story. That's another, uh, another Sunday, I guess. Um, who hoped to dominate local government at the city and county levels and to influence state politics, which he did for a while. The 1920s, the 1920s, that was talk, still talking about that. Um, the 20s saw its share of... Sorry. What is the meaning of this, Richard? Sorry. <laughs> I forgot about that speech 
about turning off your cell phone. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I was in the rush today, so. The 20s saw its share of corruption and intolerance. Sheriff William Traeger, as you can tell, is on the right. Wow. Uh, and more maybe than one. Uh, and some of his deputies were found to be members of the Invisible Empire when their Ku Klux Klan membership cards were discovered at, in a district attorney's raid uh, of the Klan's Los Angeles headquarters in 1922. District Attorney Asa Keaton's was over here on the right, sitting down at Amy's Silver McPherson's uh, trial, was indicted and convicted for accepting bribes to protect defendants in the Julian Petroleum stock scandal and spent time in San Quentin State Prison. Supervisor Sidney Graves, saying goodbye to a jail deputy, uh, a former state assemblyman, was observed on a street in San Francisco accepting an envelope containing $80,000 in cash just after the Board of Supervisors approved a very large settlement package for a San Francisco company that was to build the San Gabriel Dam uh, that had to be abandoned for safety reasons. Graves was eventually indicted for accepting a bribe, part of which was to be used to convince the rest of the supervisors to approve the settlement. Graves was convicted and spent three years in San Quentin. After his release, he was arrested for tax evasion by federal authorities for not declaring the bribe as income. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, and spent a year uh, and a half in a federal prison. Um, in addition, members of the entire Board of Supervisors in the 1920s were indicted twice for various infractions, but escaped conviction. Pardon me, Tom. Does that mean that he kept the bribe? Does that mean that he kept the bribe? Uh, I, well, I never did hear whether he had to give it back, but they, they, I think they, they found the money before that. So. But he, well, then uh, it isn't really income. Yeah, but he wasn't, he wasn't prosecuted until several years afterwards, so they could prove that he never declared it in 1929, but he supposedly received it. During the Great Depression, uh, in World War II, the supervisors turned from the state to the federal government for, uh, to fund employment relief and infrastructure projects. In a generally pluralist uh, political era of interest group liberalism, uh, in which a growing array of interest groups competed for uh, uh, influence in government, the supervisors faced considerable political opposition in a, at a time when liberals and moderates were elected to the board uh, in the mid-1930s, finally. The conservative majority of supervisors compromised on some issues, but still supported the growth objectives of the elite. A number of county officials at this time were accused and punished for indiscretions, too many to mention here. But, I'm sure you can't read that. It says, jury launches inquiry on public administrator, so there's more about it. Uh, they include Frank Bryson, the county public administrator for over 27 years. Uh, he was the subject of a grand jury investigation in 1933 for a shortage of $35,000 on his books. Bryson blamed the shortage on his assistant, who had been skimming interest on money temporarily entrusted to the county. The, I didn't make this up either. The assistant suffered a fatal heart attack just as the county auditor suddenly arrived to investigate. There were also rumors of other uh, irregularities in the department which convinced the supervisors to discharge Bryson. County Hospital Superintendent Norman R. Martin was forced to resign in 1936 after it was found that he allowed a considerable amount of waste in ordering inferior food and then having it dumped when it was not consumed. And I assume someone must have made some money from that operation. As it turned out, uh, the county grand jury discovered favoritism and a monopoly on the part of county purchasing agent Harry Russell, who was finally fired for mismanagement uh, of his department in 1936. He's, I scanned these from the ProQuest LA Times, so they were well, not very good to begin with, but it uh, fills up some space. In 1934, another county district attorney, this time Buren Fitz, found himself indicted for, this is interesting, because the DA is in charge of the county grand jury, supplies all the uh, uh, investigators and, uh, and prosecutors for it. Uh, he was uh, indicted for perjury by the grand jury after reports that he had sold land at a very inflated price to a wealthy businessman on trial for statutory rape. Fitz was thought to uh, have interfered in the case to hinder prosecution and then lied about it. And here he is in the center surrounded by his team of uh, very expensive uh, defense lawyers. 
<laughs> Reformers pressed this case as they believed Fitz was also protecting vice operators and payoffs to law enforcement officers, as well as fighting labor unions with the LAPD Red Squad. But the jury accepted his defense, that he had been overworked at the time and forgot about the land transaction. So he was found not guilty. <laughs> Several other, I wasn't on the jury, so I'm here. Several other, <laughs> Several other officials, uh, including another general hospital superintendent and the county uh, superintendent of schools were either fired or demoted in the 1930s. And in addition, three superior court judges were accused by the Los Angeles Bar Association of favoritism in gratuities, in receiving gratuities from the receivers they appointed to oversee bail, uh, ailing businesses that were falling into receivership during the Depression. In this case, it would be the county voters who would reprimand the judges by voting uh, to remove them from office in a 1932 recall election. And the three judges eventually returned to the private practice of law. During this era, <clears throat> era of social conflict and dislocation, the county government tried to cope. One supervisor, Frank Leslie Shaw, he eventually shaved that mustache off. <laughs> 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 Uh, led the way as a depression fighter in finding ways to cut county spending as its income decreased and unemployment rose. This included the repatriation of, of uh, those of Mexican ancestries, as I mentioned. Uh, he also tried to keep Los Angeles City from splitting off from the county. Uh, Shaw was elected mayor of Los Angeles in 1933 and then decided that forming a new county of just the city wasn't such a bad idea, although he could not accomplish it. And there are a lot of reasons for that that are in the book. Like, he was also suspected of graft in protecting the business interests and uh, vice in the city. A reform movement emerged that tried to force him and Judge Fletcher, Bowron, and others, uh, oops, uh, and others uh, to get uh, Fitz indicted for bribery and, and to get rid of Shaw at the same time. Of course, it didn't work with Shaw. In the meantime, County Supervisor John Anson Ford joined the reformers with other New Deal liberals and ran for mayor against Shaw in 1937, but lost. In the next few months, reformers on the left and right formed a rainbow, a very weird rainbow coalition. I'm talking communists and reactionaries. So um, um, I wrote my dissertation about that, so I can tell you a lot more if you want to hang around for a few hours. Uh, and worked to recall Mayor Shaw from office in 1938, which they did. Judge Bowen, There we go. All dressed up. Um, was their candidate, and he served as mayor for the next 15 years, second only, just, just less than that, second only to Tom Bradley. Supervisor Ford uh, remained in, in his position until 1958, the lone liberal uh, on the board of supervisors for much of that time. After World War II, the supervisors promoted uh, post war economic expansion uh, with the application of massing federal funding as the population increased. Major post-war interest groups were sponsored uh, for growth as business followed the national trend in gaining political strength to replace the New Deal coalition. The Cold War brought international events to the forefront. The testing of the atomic bomb by the Soviet Union, uh, escalation of the conflict in Korea, and re uh, revelations of espionage. These and other issues uh, heightened global tensions and influenced American politics from national to local. The Board of Supervisors responded to ordinances requiring low loyalty oaths from county employees and the registration of communists, for which it became the first county in the nation to do so. Decisions were guided by ideology, including attempted censorship of books in the county library system. The late 1940s uh, also saw continued problems with law enforcement. Okay. One county district attorney at the time was Fred Hauser, who was on the left. And I didn't get the whole story of this. The safety deposit box belonged to the Bugs of Steel. I'm not sure what they found in it, but I'll, I'll look that up. Hauser had been known to associate with gamblers in Long Beach, where he lived. He reportedly was chosen for his position for, uh, after helping his county supervisors get a salary raise when um, he was a member of the state legislature. As district attorney, he spent most of his time clashing with Bowen, the former uh, mayor of uh, Los Angeles. With the hard help of Artie Samish, the uh, major lobbyist in the state legislature, Hauser managed to win an election as Attorney General of California in 1946. 
but his reputation among elected officials was well known. When Governor Earl Warren decided to crack down on vice and organized crime in the state, he ignored Hauser and created a crime commission to do the job. The Sheriff's Department at the time was small in comparison to the LAPD and other city uh, police departments. It probably had a better reputation in dealing with racial minorities and f with fewer publicized incidences of discrimination and brutality, uh, except for the Zoot Suit Riots and possibly a couple of other incidents. Uh, however, it was deeply involved in protecting vice, as documented by the state's crime commission. The county grand jury looked into the allegations and discovered, quote, a clearly defined pattern of vice protection in this county, unquote. <laughs> it included payoffs of over $100,000 from gamblers to be warned in advance of raids. Official county documents related to one major raid were delivered on a Sunday morning to a lawyer for the underworld figures who was found murdered three days later. Orders were given by the chief of the sheriff's vice squad to conduct raids only at certain times uh, when all evidence had already been removed. And sheriff's personnel were reported to have accepted Christmas gifts from the uh, candidates, etc., etc. Sheriff Gene Viscalus demanded a public hearing of all the allegations, but he quickly changed his mind after becoming aware of the conflicting testimony of his officers. He then discharged Carl Person. Peterson, uh, the chief of the vice squad, and uh, began reorganizing the department. He probably would have also discharged former vice squad captain Al Wasti, who was also implicated, but Wasti had already retired. Both Pearson, that one. Okay, that's, that's where Pearson got fired. Uh, along with deputy sheriff and, uh, and a gambler were indicted for perjury for this in uh, 1951. Pearson was found guilty, but received only probation while click. Al Wasli uh, got two years in uh, Chino State Prison. Some of these incidents were reported in 1950 by the U.S. Uh, Senate Crime Investigation Committee investigating the antics of Eastern gangsters such as Benjamin Bubsy Siegel, who was murdered in Beverly Hills in 1947. After Siegel's death, local mobster and haberdasher, Mickey Cohen, excuse me, Michael Cohen, uh, was the bane or patron, depending on which way you look at it, of the Sheriff's Department and LAPD vice squads until he was finally in prison. In these years, the majority of supervisors followed national trends in governing, look at him, in the Grand Hall of Administration, what in the late 50s, uh, and competed for power with older cities as they created more municipal services for uh, unincorporated areas and then for new cities with the Lakewood plan. For several decades, uh, the supervisors would be characterized as the five old kings because of their perceived political power within their districts and the region overall. This era still continues to some day, uh, to some, uh, res uh, in, in some respects, despite gains made by progressive groups later in the century. The political follies in the county during the post-1950 period continued to involve county supervisors and other officials in interesting situations that I hope to explore in the next book, which follows the book I described. And I'll just describe just a, a few of those details that are mostly related to uh, some of the participants in the continuing project. A number of supervisors died uh, in office in 1850, from 1852 to the present, but only one was actually killed. Look at <laughs> Uh, Raymond Darby, Darby, who was on the extreme right, uh, who served from 1946 to 1953, was beaten in the old county uh, hall of records by a disappointed and very irate developer and died from the injuries. He's the, wow. he's the, he's the, this is right as that meeting was going on. He's the only supervisor I know of to be physically attacked by a constituent, but I suppose other constituents have probably thought about it. <laughs> Several officials were accused of various misdeeds. Herbert Leg, he's uh, second from the left, uh, was accused of taking bribes, or campaign donations, depending on how you look at it, uh, from rubbish con contractors in the 1950s. And he, was in, he was indicted for perjury uh, in that investigation and was brought to trial but was not convicted. And some old timer uh, county bureaucrat told me that he thought there was some kind of a deathbed confession by one of his aides that uh, took the rap for it. But I, I'm not sure that that's true with the little pursuits that I've done so far. So anyway, but anyway, he wasn't, he wasn't convicted. Of those in this photo, okay, as we go from uh, left to right, uh, seated. 
Burton Chase, Bernie Debs, and Frank Benelli were accused on many occasions of taking bribes from developers, but never the formal charge. Warren Dorn, who's the next one, he used to be mayor of Pasadena at one time, was more interested in protecting your moral sensibilities. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and here he is closing the uh, door of the Backseat 38 Dodge installation by Bedford Kynholz mm. in the County Art Museum in 1966 yeah. so that impressionable children and adults would not be shocked by such a display. As he once said, he knows pornography. In the uh, 1980s, we had a conservative majority on board of supervisors, as you most probably remember, that intended to uh, completely reform county uh, government as their hero, Ronald Reagan, promised to do at the national level. Here they are. The majority, made up of Dean Dana, Pete Shabaram, and Mike Antonovich, uh, the first three from the left, uh, were consistently suspected of favoring developers for uh, campaign contributions in that decade. In fact, Pete Shabaram was a developer. <laughs> he wasn't in, he was a football player too first, but then he became a developer. He wasn't indicted for uh, anything in those years, but he was indicted in 1997 for tax evasion involving a trip he took that was funded by the private support foundation of a county museum uh, that I used to work for. He decided to make a deal to stay out of jail, and he did. He had already left the board when he was replaced by the very first elected woman. Elected. Gloria was not the first woman on the board. Uh, that would have been Yvonne Burke, who was appointed by Jerry Brown in 1979 and served for one year before she was defeated by Dana, uh, and then came back and was uh, elected in 1992 and served 12 years, I think. I can't remember exactly when she was, but I'll, I will find that out. A lot of other county officials were brought to some sort of justice after 1950. We're almost done here, so. Uh, Thomas Noguchi was the uh, the coroner of the stars, uh, as he was known for his autopsies of Robert F. Kennedy, Madeline Wood, John Bellucci, William Holden, Janice Joplin, uh, and others, was almost fired in 1969 for mismanagement of his department. He managed to escape that predicament, but would eventually be demoted in 1982 for similar charges, as well as his pension for seeking publicity uh, and his moonlighting uh, employment. And this is not his only tell-all book. The summer of 19, in, the, in the summer of 1971, public administrator, another one, Baldo Christovich, my favorite names, was investigated by the district attorney for his financial dealings and eventually fired by supervisors. At the same time, county clerk William Sharp clashed with the county grand jury over his handling of the mis or mishandling of uh, evidence in the case of the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy. County uh, assessor Philip Watson, in the middle here, I can't say the big mustache at all. Big mustaches. Uh, was even put on trial for accepting bribes or you know, paying contributions in 1967, but he managed to escape conviction. And today, the more recent county assessor is awaiting trial for reducing property assessments uh, for a price. And of course, Sheriff Baca is now gone after uh, facing continuing accusations of misdeeds in administering his department, particularly the jails. And there were many others, uh, also many scandals in Los Angeles city government over the years, uh, which is a whole other story for a whole other time and probably another book. Uh, at the beginning of the talk, I mentioned that there would not be a lot about the city of Los Angeles in this book because I wanted to stress the long neg neglected role of the county in this region's local government. But upon further reflection, I suppose there is still a lot of the city of Los Angeles, including in this book. Uh, after all, it was, and it is, the county seat of Los Angeles County and the home of the courthouse crowd. And this might be a good segue, I think, into uh, Kim's novel and her uh, talk on law in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. okay. I was just going to say, and in, as Richard said, I have a, a, I actually have only three books. If anybody's interested, when this is all over with, they make great uh, Christmas gifts. All right, so Tom, thank you. You're going to come back. You're going to come. Back. I'll be around. No, I mean you're going to come back later in the year. But yes, you're here. You're here to sign books. We'll have you back to talk more later in the year. <coughs> you, you've you've, set, you've only started. I want to thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is. Oh, okay. Um, Let's come back. I have five to one, five minutes to one. Let's come back in ten minutes.
five minutes after one, and we'll get started, okay?